For the sake of completeness, let's look at how we more formally find the corner frequency for our low pass filter. So previously, we looked at what happens when you measure the voltage across the capacitor, and you end up with a low pass filter, and we found that the transfer function for this particular low pass filter was equal to 1 over 1 plus JWCR. And to help us analyze this transfer function in a little more detail, we really would like to have it in a form that looks like our general polar coordinate system, but right now it's in a Cartesian coordinate system. And so we have to go through sort of the minorly horrible math of taking our fraction there and expressing it in a polar coordinate system. And so if we were to write out the, lo the denominator of that fraction, then we could place it in the complex plane here at 1 WCR, because this is the real component of that signal of that value, and this is the imaginary component of that value. And remember, to put, it, to put things in a polar form, we need to know what this length is right here, and then what this angle is. And so the length of this is going to be, so we'll just call this L, the length is going to be the x component squared, the y component squared, and the square root of it. So this would be 1 squared, w squared, c squared, r squared, and then the square root of that. And then our particular angle is going to be the tangent inverse of y over x, which would be wcr divided by 1. And so if we take these two elements and plug them in up here, what we end up with is our transfer function is equal to 1 over this L function that we came up with, e to the j, this uh, theta function. And so our transfer function, just kind of expressing this all out, is going to be 1 over that function times e to the negative j of this theta function. And so this expression right here is going to be the magnitude bit of our transfer function, and this is going to be the phase of our transfer function. And let me be completely correct here. Make sure I drew this one out, because we used theta there. So writing this all out, our magnitude of the transfer function is 1 over the square root of 1 plus w squared c squared r squared, and our phase of the transfer function is the negative tangent inverse of WRC. And of course, I've completely run out of space, so we're going to put it over here, and that it's the negative tangent inverse of WRC. So that is how we can take this transfer function and turn it into the pieces that we're familiar with. And now that we have both the magnitude element of the function and the phase element of the function, we can derive more formally what the corner frequency is. One little definition about the corner frequency, it's we in this class also talk about it where it's the magnitudes at 70%, but the more formal definition is the corner frequency is when the signal is at half power. And we haven't talked about power of a signal yet, but for this particular signal, the power in the transfer function, the power in our signal is related to the transfer function squared. And so at whatever frequency this transfer function squared is one half, that is the point at which we can find our corner frequency. And so we can take our definition here of our corner frequency squared, so that'd be one over square root of one plus r squared c squared omega squared, square it is equal to one half. And so Applying our square, we get 1 over 1 plus r squared c squared omega squared is equal to 1 half. Rearranging all of our values here, we end up with 1 plus r squared c squared w squared is equal to 2, which makes r squared c squared w squared equal to 1. And so now, if I take the square root of all of this, we have r c w is equal to 1. And so finally rearranging 
if we solve for frequency, we get 1 over RC. And since we solved here for when this expression was 1 half, that is how we determine the corner frequency for this particular low-pass circuit.